Okay, so real quick, 5455. Five. We're going to do the first quiz prepping class today. I'll post the second quiz prep today with your uh, email and the, on the announcement. We'll go over that second quiz prep on Wednesday. I'll post the third quiz prep on Wednesday. Finish up our 5-5 five, five, and 5-6. Five, uh, next Monday, go over the third quiz prep. Finish up 5-6. You'll get the review sheet from the Chapter 5B text. This quiz on graphing, on basically 5.4, you're going to have to graph a sine and a cosine. Sine and a cosine. There will be a bonus graph, which is from section 5.5. 5.5 is tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosine. So that will be a bonus question on the table. Let's well, next Monday. At the end of class, basically the last 15 minutes of class is the first attempt at the memory quiz that I showed you last Wednesday. It's posted, the practice memory quiz. All I do is change the angles and, you know, reorganize the, the blocked out squares. Ten problems, one point of each. It's got to be exactly right, exact value, no decimals, no calculators, no notes. If the class average is 80% or higher, the class will get unit circle on every test from here on out. If it's not 80% or higher, then you try again before the chapter six test. We do it three times. It does count towards your grade. We'll do it three times. I think the highest of the three attempts. If you're happy with your first attempt, you don't have to do the second or third one. If we make 80% on the first attempt, if you don't like your overall, your score, you can do the other one. That's not going to bring it down. I always keep the higher of all three. So it's not going to lower it. It'll always work out to your advantage. I'm not going to use it against you. Okay. But Monday will be the first attempt. Monday is the first attempt. On Wednesday, we review. Okay? I'll give you the take-home part one test of the Chapter 5B. Give you need the take-home. Again, just graphing. No bonus on it, just graphing. On Monday, you turn that in. And on Monday the 14th, we actually take the second part, the inflat part. Okay. And that's when the homework will be doing. Let's see what we're after. We have sine and cosine. We have to keep track of we haven't done cosine yet. They haven't looked at the picture yet. But for sine, why? equals a sine b there's going to be an h in there in a minute x minus h and then a plus k the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude it stretches it vertically it stretches it vertically okay if A is a negative, the fact that it's a negative is going to reflect it across the x-axis. Like a flip. If A is less than zero, it reflects across the x-axis. A flip. B controls the period. For sine and cosine, and that also it will, will include secant and cosecant. For sine, cosine, and secant, cosecant, the normal period is two pi. It takes two pi radians to complete one cycle or one oscillation of sine and cosine. Okay? 
So the normal period will make it a plus 72. There's two pi. Two pi's. Tangent and cotangent have a different normal period. That means two pi radians, two complete, one cycle. Or one oscillation. B will change the period if there's a B involved. So the period is always going to be your normal period. 2 pi divided by whatever b is equal to. So when you have just y equals simple sine x, in this case, the a is a 1, 1 times sine x, and b is equal to a 1, 1 times x. So the amplitude is the absolute value of 1, which is a 1. The amplitude is 1. And the period which is 2 pi divided by b, b is a 1. So the period is 2 pi over 1. Hello, it's just 2 pi. No big deal. But when we do have a b involved, it's going to change. H will be the horizontal shift. And again, we're going to come back to this in a second. And H, in order to have an H, it has to be inside parentheses with X. If there's nothing in a parentheses with your X, that's not an H. It has a built-in negative. So if there's an H, if you take the H out, you're going to take out the opposite sign. And again, we'll cover that and we'll talk about that more extensively in a minute. And then K is going to be the vertical shape. And move it up and down. K has a plus in front of it. K comes after sine or cosine tangent, secant, cosecant, any of the trick functions that have already happened. So it's after the fact. You take all those values and then you either add something or subtract something from it. You're going to keep the sign for K because a positive is not going to change whatever K sign is. A negative would, but a positive won't. So, bias box. Make a list. You know what you're supposed to be looking for. You know you're supposed to figure out these things based upon amplitude is the absolute value of A, and the period is going to be 2 pi divided by whatever B is. So if I'm up here, I'm going to say, okay, what is A actually equal? What is, yeah, what is the A? No. Negative 2. The A is negative 2. And I want to acknowledge the fact that it's negative because it's going to flip. It's going to reflect. And then the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 2, so it's a positive 2. If you put a negative where it says amplitude, that one, amplitude is a distance, so it's always going to be positive no matter what. Amplitude is not A. It's the absolute value of A. And then the period, what is the B in this problem? Is there? It's a what? B is a 2. So the period is going to be 2 pi over that B. So 2 pi over 2 is? 
Five. And you fill in the blanks. That's what I'm looking for. That's it. I'm just looking for what are those answers? Now, graphing. I want to see five major points that we have to acknowledge when we graph. Them. This is how I graph. When we graph by hand, I. You are more than welcome because it's a take home. And even if it wasn't a table, if it was in class, you have a graphing calculator. You can punch that in, graph it, and then copy it onto the graph. That's fine. I, how would I know? But it better be accurate, better be nicely drawn. And the cap, you know, the graphing calculator is not going to answer the questions on the side. You might be able to figure it out. But if you can figure it out, why don't you just do it? Because you'll learn more that way. So, here's how I break it down. Have you ever heard of a thumbnail sketch? A little thumbnail sketch? When you're trying to make a big picture, when an artist is trying to do something like a big major, what they'll do is they'll kind of like do a little tiny little sketch of what it's supposed to look like before they start making their bigger sketch. They just kind of make a little rough, little tiny picture, you know, like the size of a thumbnail. It's not what they just do this. You know, they're painting and they're doing this and they're looking like that. But with respect to what they're about to draw, and my shoulders can't handle the more. We want to get that high. Down. I'm just going to break this down. I want to graph y equals negative 2 sine 2x. So I start with what is the parent term? What is just sine 1? So I make a thumbnail of what is about to happen to this picture to make this picture so I don't just make a mess. This picture starts here, and it goes up, and then it comes down, and it goes right there. And I'm going to, that's a zero. It finishes in two pi. This is one pi in the middle. It goes up to one. It goes down to negative. That's your basic, simple sign term. And then I start to take little pieces of what the graph that I'm trying to make. Now, so y equals, instead of 1 times sine x, I'm going to put negative 2 times this, sine x. So if it's a negative 2, instead of going up, it's going to go down first. Because the negative would flip it. So it's going to go this way. And, then come, come and because it's a two, instead of going one and negative one, it's going to be negative two and positive two. It's going to get stretched. And this would still be, you still got your zero, you got one pi, and that's two pi. This is pi over two. And this would be 3 pi over 2. Now, what does this do with? It makes the period, the amplitude was 2, I did that already, the period, instead of 2 pi, was one pi instead. It finished in one pi. I'm not going to change this. You know what I'm going to do? If the period is one pi, this would be one pi. This would be halfway, pi over two. Instead of taking two pi to complete that one cycle, it's going to take one pi to complete that one cycle. So now I have enough to just do my graph. It's going to start here at zero, zero, 
because it did not move left or right, it didn't keep shifting up or down. I want to go down further. It's going to finish here at top. That's one side. At pi over two, right in the middle is where it's going to cross the x axis again. Right in the middle. So it's going to, it's supposed to go down, up, and come back down again. Down. So it must reach its minimum halfway between zero and pi over two. Halfway is pi over four. So this minimum is going to be at pi over 4, negative 2. So it's going to go down, come up to pi over 2, and then it's got to go up to 2, because that's the amplitude, at 3 pi over 4, because that's in the middle. And then it's going to come down to pi. Use the information to sketch and label at least one period of the function. Well, there's one period of the graph. Now, what would happen is if you wanted to go again, it would be another pi radian, so pi to 2 pi, right here in between pi and 3 pi over 2, it's going to go down to negative 2 again. In between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, it's going to go up to 2 again. Down, up, feels like I have a five pound kind of weight in my arm, which should be in my head. You got show one. So now, here's the whole deal. Let's do an H and But let's not do one of the tough kind of games. Okay, let's let's try to use the homework example. See, we would have five point four. Oh, we can actually do, we can take care of 12, 16, and 20. Number 12. They want to know the period and the amplitude. I mean, they give you a picture of it, but they also give you the equation. Right here, number 12. And let's not worry about the fact that it's a coastline. What is the A? And what's the B? Three. So amplitude is the absolute value of A. So the amplitude is what? It's going to be a two. The period is two pi over B. So what's the period in this? One? Two pi over the two pi. Over the it takes two pi over three or two thirds pi to complete one oscillation. So right here is two pi over three. Number 60. What's the A right there? Three over two. So the amplitude is going to be absolute value, which is just what's that? No, only 16. Oh. Yeah, three over 16. Three over two. This is tricky. 
for the for this one right here, what is B equal? Pi over two. No, pi over two, not the x, just the pi over two. So B times x. So the coefficient of x is pi over two. The period is two pi divided by whatever that b. So this is two pi, and you're dividing by pi over two. Not pi over four. If I divide by pi over two, that means it's going to be two pi times two over pi. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. Two pi divided by pi over two means two pi times the reciprocal, two over pi. The pi is reduced, so it's two times two. The period is four. There's no pi in it. It's just the number four. One, two, three, four. You wouldn't have pies on the x, y axis. Let me see. But I've given you some practice, right? Let me see. Where are you? Look at about that one right there. So it ended up working. Which is a dead giveaway. If you're doing the, the test question and there's no pies, on the graph that I gave you to grab on, that must mean that your period doesn't have pi in it. Because B has pi. You'd be divided by pi, pi cancels out. And then I changed 20. I want to take this one to be 20. So y is equal to negative 5 over 2 cosine of x over 4. So what is n? Just n. Negative 5 over 2 negative five over two. And I want you to, what does a equal? Then do amplitude. Because you need to identify and remember the fact that if it's negative, flip it. If you go straight to 5 over 2, you're going to forget the fact that it's negative. You're not going to reflect. Okay? We're not asking you, I'm not asking you to put amplitude straight up. Now it's empty. What's the amplitude? You have the absolute value here. So it's the value of negative 5 over 2. You, have to, you don't have to show all this work. It's 5 over 2. What is B? What times that? What is it? You have B times that cosine B X right now. What's B? Five. Is that is that four like you know? Is it four times that? One over one. Is that just one fourth X? X over four is the same as one fourth of X. See it, recognize it, know it's there. One times x over four is just one fourth x. Like dealing with slope, if you have y is equal to x over three minus two, then the slope is equal to one third, one third x minus two. When you divide by three, you're taking one third of something. If I divide by three, I'm taking a third of it. Or x over three is the same as one times x over three, which is the same as one over three times x. Okay. Let's see. So b is one fourth. So the period, that 2 pi over b, so 2 pi divided by a fourth, go again. 
8 pi. So this would be 2 pi times the reciprocal of 1 fourth. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So the pair would be 8 pi. It would take 8 pi in to complete that oscillation. You're dividing by one fourth. You're divided by a quarter. How many quarters in a dollar? Four. How many quarters in two dollars? Eight. You take two times, take the reciprocal. One fourth goes into two eight times. Just wait till we have to start. Factoring out a fraction. Yeah. Multiplying by fraction, then factoring a fraction out. Okay, 33 and 35, we'll do that to 32 or 30. Let's do cosine. Let's talk about cosine first. We don't sign the sign. Let's discuss what cosine is. I only have a thing more small, so I don't need to that back. That's the one. This will be one value negative. Simple character for cosine. Okay, here we go. One zero. Square root three over two, one half. Square root two over two, square root two over two. One half. Square root three over two. Zero, one. And then x is negative coming this way, y is positive. They're both negative. X is positive, y is negative. What, I, what we did last Wednesday, square root three over two is approximately 0 0.8660 or about 87. Square root two over two is approximately 0.71. Actually, 72. And then you have the one half of one half. The cosine at zero radians. Cosine is the x coordinate. At zero, cosine is equal to one. At zero, cosine is one. Look at how this is divided. Zero, five, or two. That's 90. How many little squares do you see? So how many, what rating is that? No, what rating? What, what angle? Pi over... Six. six. And then so this is one six. That's two over six. That's pi over three. Three pi over six. Four pi over six. So this is two pi over three. Five pi over six. Six over six is one pi. Seven pi over six. Eight pi over six, which is four pi over three. Nine over six is three pi over two. 10 over 6 is 5 pi over 3. 
11, 5, or 6. Where would 1, 4, pi over 4 be? Because this is where we have the cosine of pi over 4. Where's pi over 4 be? Right in between, right here. There's pi over 4. So pi over 4, right here. So 3 pi over 4 is right here. And four, uh, 5 pi over 4 is going to be right here. And 7 pi over 4 is going to be right here. Okay, right, here we go. And zero radians, cosine is 1. X coordinate is 1. At pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is squared 3 over 2 which is about 0.87. So if that's 1, and this is 0.5, then 0.87 is the right value for pi over 6. And pi over 4, 0 0.72, 7071. 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, so it's 0. 0.5. At pi over 3, the y value is 1 half. And the cosine of pi over 2, the x coordinate is 0. So from 0 to pi over 2, the cosine starts at 1, and it comes all the way down to 0 when we get to pi over 2. That's quadrant 1. From zero to pi over two. Then once we're past pi over two, now we're in quadrant two. Cosine is negative. From here to here, cosine is negative. Pi over three is the same answer. Sorry, two pi over three is the same answer as one pi over three because pi over three is the reference angle. Over here, this is negative one half. Square root 3 over 2. The x is negative 1. And then here is negative 0 0.7071. About negative 0 0.8660. And then at pi, we're at negative 1, 0. x is negative 1. So quadrant 2, we go down. I'm bring up those robots. That's quadrant one, quadrant two. And then from here, it's going to start to go back up. And we're going to get zero again at three pi over two. At three pi over two, we're going to be at zero negative one. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. There. We go. there. And that in quadrant four, from three power two to two pi, cosine is positive. So we're going to go back up through the half. The point seven zero seven one to the point eight six six zero and then the one. That's what cosine looks like from zero to two pi. From zero to two pi. And you know what it is? It's the sine trend. Here's sine. It is exactly the same shape, size, amplitude, period, all the same as sign. It's just been shifted. 
if you take the side curve and shift it pi over two units to the left, you get the cosine curve. Or if I take cosine, move it pi over two to the right, I get the side curve. Okay. They're the same curve, just one is out of phase of the other. Pi over two radians out of phase, 90 degrees out of phase. So here's what you got to remember. When you're starting your parent from here, the y equals simple sine x. It starts at zero, zero, and it goes up, it comes back down, and it finishes at two pi. One pi in the middle, halfway, pi over two. So there's a half a pi, two over two. In the middle here is three pi over two. When you start cosine x, Cosine x starts up here at 0, 1. And it goes down and comes and finishes back up at 0, 1. So if this is 0, that's 2 pi. It takes 2 pi radians to complete that one cycle. In the middle is half of 2 pi, 1 pi. In the middle of 0 to 1 pi, there's pi over 2. In between pi and 2 pi, 3 pi over 2. You need to know where sine starts, where cosine will start. Because it's based on those starting points where everything else is going to get moved to challenge. Lift it up, lift it down, flipped. But you got to know the basic ones to make it happen. So everything that A does to sine, A is the amplitude. Same thing for cosine. A cosine B, X minus H and a plus K. They do the same thing. Absolute value of A, amplitude. 2 pi divided by B is the period. H is the horizontal shift. K is the vertical shift. Now let's look at 33 or 35. So 33, you start with sine x, and then you grab negative 4 sine x. 35, they want you to grab cosine pi x, and then they want you to grab 1 plus the cosine pi x. Which one? Good, I like 35. Let's see 35. So we're going to need one of our special units. Something without time. Something without so much stamina. Oh.
First one is 635. It was y equals cosine of pi x. Then after that, y equal one plus cosine of pi x. So here it's just you know, for your own good. You got y equals a cosine b parentheses x minus h and then a plus k. What's the answer? One. So the amplitude is going to be that absolute value of a. So absolute value of one. So all you got to do is one. Now the words if any, sine and cosine are the only trig functions that have an amplitude. If you were asked to graph for 5.6, 5.5, 5. So, secant, cosecant, tangent, or cotangent, the answer is going to be none because secant, cosecant, tangent, or cotangent will not have an amplitude. They don't have it. What is B? Hot. Hot. So the period is that 2 pi divided by B. So 2 pi divided by pi is what? That's 2. Inside parentheses with X, do you see anything in there with the X? Is there a parenthesis? So what would H have to be? Put zero. Horizontal shift, if any, just put zero. H is equal to zero. There's not, there's no parentheses, so H is a zero. Is there anything added or subtracted after the cosine? What's the K? Zero. So the vertical shift is zero. Okay. The word asymptotes. Sine and cosine are the only ones with amplitude. Okay, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. The answer is none. Secant, cosecant, cotangent, and tangent are the only ones that will have asymptotes. That means sine and cosine. This answer for sine and cosine is the word none. They will not have asymptotes. An asymptote is going to occur if the function is undefined for any value. Sine and cosine are defined for everything. They're never going to be something over zero because they're the numerator. So we're after y equals cosine of pi x. So I start with my little thumbnail sketch. Simple y equals cosine x. Cosine x does this. It starts at one, comes down, goes back up to one, and that finishes at two pi. You get one pi in the middle, you got the pi over two, you got the over three pi over two, with one, there's the name. The only thing that happened to this graph, the pair curve, to our new graph is we put a pi right here. And the only thing that pi did was change the period. So the period, instead of being zero to a two pi, this is just two. If that's two, then what's halfway in between? That's a one, and this would be one half, and this would be three over two. Not a great, I wish it was better, but and I really think about it. Um, let's say, so many mistakes. Come on, I don't 
know you're around here somewhere. You're like brand new. So that's from the Liberty Jill. That's a good one. So, it would be here at one. The advantage is right back there at two. When it hits one, it should be hitting the bottom, so it should go down and back up. So it's got a cross in the middle at one half, got a cross in the middle at three over two. It's going to go down and here and up and in there. And then it would do it again and finish at four. Not that you have to draw it out, but from the bottom three, back and four. It's, and I see this. When you, that's why I would want you to draw more than one really good one, because when you get ambitious and try to draw more than one really good one, they start to look good. Okay. Going this way, one to the right, you get negative one as a one. So one to the left is negative one. Negative one half right one. And two is when it will finish back up at positive one. Right? So we're used to seeing the trig function written not like this, a times cosine bx, b parentheses, x minus h, and then plus k. So this one plus cosine pi x is kind of throwing me off. So I need to think about what is this one plus, what is well, A is times the cosine. It's the K value. The only thing being ever being added or subtracted from the sine, cosine, or any of the trig function is K would be added or subtracted. So this is actually Y equals cosine pi X, and then you can do the plus one. But here's what happens when somebody sees this. They, see, they think that plus one is a Y. It, they think it's the H. Because if you put that plus one right there, they think whatever comes after the X is automatically adjusting the X. So it's the H value. But it can't be H unless there's parentheses around it. There has to be parentheses. There ain't no parentheses. So that's not an H. Okay. A is a one. B is still high. H is still zero. K is equal to one. There's a vertical shift. Everything is shifted up one. So the amplitude has to change. The amplitude is still the absolute value of A, so it's one. 
The period is still 2 pi divided by pi. So the period is still 2. The horizontal shift, h is still 0. So the horizontal shift is still 0. But we have a vertical shift now. The vertical shift, you just put the k value there. The vertical shift is 1. So for horizontal shift, whatever h is, the vertical shift is whatever k is. Find the H, find the K, those are the answers to those two. And that has to be done. It's not so good to them, too. And what that k value is going to do, it's going to take all these old answers. Somehow it's moving. Now I'm going to All of these old answers, all of these cosine. I pi x's, we add one to all of them. So this is a one. If I add one, it's now a two. Right here, it's a zero. If I add one, it's going to be up at one. This is negative one. If I add one, it's going to be zero. This y coordinate is zero. If I add one to it, right here, if I add one, it's going to be one. This y coordinate is one. When I add one, I get two. This is going to shift up one. This is going to shift. Everybody is shifting up one unit. That's what K does. It shifts the graph up one unit. It doesn't stretch it. It just everybody gets you know picks up the move. Everything is shifted up one unit. Putting on sine of pi, I or sine of sine of x minus pi. Yeah. So now we're going to put in the horizontal shift. Y is equal to the sine of x minus pi over four parentheses.
Okay, one sign. One, so the amplitude is one. What times x? Is there a b out here? No. So uh, technically, yes, but b is one, right? So the period would be two pi divided by b, since b is a one, it's just one. Two pi. So the period is one. Now, we have a parentheses. There's something in there with x. We see x minus power four. So h is what? Positive pi over four. The negative is built in, it's been built in. So when you extract the h out, when you take out the value of h, it's the opposite side. The negative is already there. So h had to be a positive pi over four. This graph is going to shift pi over four to the right. Pi over four to the right. Is there a k? It's k. So k is zero. And no. So you have a thumb Simple sine x. So sine x starts at zero, zero. Goes up, comes back down, finishes at two pi. This is pi over two. Sorry, right, one pi. You get your pi over two in the middle, you get your three pi over two. Now, what's supposed to happen? Everybody's going to move pi over four to the right. Everybody's going to get shoved. To the right, pi over four. So instead of at zero, zero, it's going to be a pi over four. So that point is going to be here at pi over four. Pi over two is going to move to the right. It's going to move to three pi over four. So that value of one is gonna move from here to here, where three pi over four is. It used to be zero at pi, so it's gonna move pi over four to the right, it's gonna move here, five pi over four. So it's gonna miss. Now over here, technically it's coming from this other side, it's coming from down here. Don't need to worry too much about what's going on to the left of it because I just want to see one oscillation. Everything is going pi over four to the right. So this three pi over two is going to go pi over four to the right. Pi over four to the right is going to take us to seven pi over four, which is in between down here. There's our negative one. And then instead of two pi, it's going to be pi over four to the right. If you're seven over four, seven over four, and what this is nine pi over four. Everybody just took the pi over four step to the right. That's the horizontal shift. But I need to know how this has changed. So it's just a matter of seeing how the movement happens. And if you have a unit circle, you can see it used to be a three pi over two. Well, what's the angle pi over four next door to it? Well, you'll see on the unit circle that's three pi over four. Also, you'd be able to tell if you look at the graph, the grid you're given to graph on. I really try to provide a grid that has the units that you need to give you a hint, to give you a clue. But then again, answering these, that's 15 points. Drawing the graph accurately, that's 10 points. Can you graph it on your task letter? Then, yeah, you can do that, but just make sure you draw it accurately.
Ah, I want to take apart quiz prep number one. So I want to show you how messed up this can be. If you're not paying attention to what you're doing, look at this presentation. I think we have we got this part. Now. A, B, H, K. We know we got to find those. So what is A? The actual numerical value of A. Negative one. So negative cosine. Well, your Y equals A cosine B times X minus H and then plus K. So A is a negative one. So the amplitude absent by negative one. Positive. What's the B in here? B is a two. It'd be the multiple of X, so B is a two. So the period two pi divided by two is what? One pi. Period of one pi. What's the H? Pirates is rock. Negative prior to? No. Opposite side. Prior to? No. Wrong. You already said that. Exactly. So it's going to be Hi. Wait. Uh, power four. Power four. You see how the original equation, B times parentheses, B times parentheses, B times parentheses, B parentheses, not 2x minus pi over 2, because that B is not times parentheses. You got to rewrite it. It doesn't look like our general equation. So what you have to do is you have to factor out that two. Two times times four. So now we can see that H is positive pi over four. Please ask right now if you don't see it. Everybody okay with the fact that it's positive? It's the opposite sign. See a negative x minus h is positive. How about the fact that we went from pi over 2 to pi over 4? Everybody okay with that? Yeah. When we factor, we're reversing distribution. So we have, you know, four times x minus three. When you distribute, you multiply. You get four x minus 12. When you factor out the four, when you factor it out, you're dividing each one by the four. You divide by four, you factor it out. Distribution, we'll put it in. Factoring, you divide it out. So there's your x minus 3. So we can't have 2 in here, so we had to factor out the 2. two. So when you take out that 2, when we take out that 2, we're dividing by two. We divide by two. We divide by two. So we're two times. There's one x. 
minus pi over 2 divided by 2 so pi over 2 times the reciprocal 1 half pi 2 times a half is pi over 2. That's how we get the pi over 2. Or think about you're dividing by two. If you have a half a dollar and you divide by two, you should have a quarter of a dollar. So if I have a half a pie and I divide by two, factor out the two, I have a quarter of a pie. So we always want to isolate x from the fences. That would be true. That's, that's the only way to tell what the exact horizontal shift is. Because if you have two inside the parentheses, that is not h. That is not the h. H has to be isolated with the X. This H is right here. H, if you think this is H, it's affecting two, two X, not one X. Okay? So it's so a horizontal shift of pi over four, and since it's positive, it's going to the right. And then, is there a K value? Yeah, there's a K value. Yeah, there's a K value. So on Wednesday, we will graph that. And we'll also look at the quiz prep that I'm putting up and posting today. And we'll have to handle the reciprocals on Wednesday, five, six. Like I have here. High five. Get them mixed up. <laughs>